My name is Alex Lavelle. I am a project manager here at Commercient, uh, and I will be walking you through the core product today. Uh, if you have any questions as we go, please feel free to ask them under the questions tab of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, the demo itself will take about eight to ten minutes, and when we finish that up, uh, I'll take whatever questions are there. Uh, you should all be able to see my screen now, so we can go ahead and get started. With Salesforce already, then this will look more or less normal to you. Um, I've got a view up of all my accounts, just a little information in it. Uh, in this case, I wanted to really just call attention to the AR customer code column. Um, for customers coming into Salesforce from Epicor, this column will be filled out. For customers, or for accounts that have been created in Salesforce natively that aren't syncing to Epicor, it'll be blank. So it's a quick way to tell who was originated where. Uh, if you are using our tool, you can still create accounts inside of Salesforce uh, without linking them back to Epicor. That's not a problem. Uh, and if you do eventually add them as a customer in Epicor, you can merge the two. Uh, or we have a tool to automatically create the customer in Epicor based on the account. Uh, that's not something we're going to look at today, but if you have questions about that now or down the road, it's something we can certainly discuss and show one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. If we take a look at one of the accounts we have inside of Salesforce, uh, most of what you see on screen is going to look pretty familiar to you. Uh, your standard sort of Salesforce details, I've got a few I've pulled off screen um, just to get out of my way, uh, and then a series of related lists. Uh, that are not native to Salesforce uh, and have this little commercial logo. These related lists are the data that we bring in from Epicor. Um, and we bring information in, in a couple of places. So the top level is the account page. Uh, you can see here the customer master, the ship to of master, and the sales order header and invoice header tables. Um, as we drill down, you'll see some other information as well. Sales order detail lines, invoice detail lines, payments, uh, everything along those lines. Anything you see, you can bring up to this level um, and show on here. Uh, I've just sort of set mine up as one possible scenario and how, how a user might define their screens. All of the tools that we bring, or all of the data we bring in utilize standard Salesforce tools. Uh, we are what Salesforce calls a licensed managed package, uh, which means a couple of things. One, it means that we have worked along Salesforce to make sure that we meet all of their standards for data security and for data validation coming in. Uh, it also means that all of the tools we create, all of the information we bring in, are fully compatible with standard Salesforce layout and account security controls. So as I mentioned, there are items we bring in that I don't have on screen. I can add those using standard layout tools. Uh, the information you do see on screen can be removed. Uh, the individual columns you see on each of these lists be swapped out for other data um, from each of these database tables that we bring in. Uh, what you see on my screen is just sort of middle of the road, very common sorts of data, but if there's something uh, that comes in from one of the tables we see going forward that you want on screen. It's very easy to do without learning any new tools. You just hit edit layouts and then add the column to your related list. Uh, by the same token, as I mentioned, we're also fully compatible with account security, uh, both at the user and at the role level inside of Salesforce. So if you have certain data that you consider sensitive, that you don't want certain users to be able to see, uh, they can, you, can you can restrict for those users or those groups of users access to see those columns of the data. Um, or you can simply create the layouts that you want users to see and deploy those user by user or role by role. You have full control using all of the standard tools on who can see what uh, and whether they have the ability to change what's on their screen. Uh, moving forward, if we take a look at one of our sales order header records, uh, what you'll see on screen here is 
uh, pretty pretty much in line with what one of my live users might see. Um, I've based a lot of my screens on what my users uh, who I've taken live with the system have put on theirs. Um, so at the very top, you've got sort of your general header information here, who's placed the order, when do they need it, what's the order amount, what's their PO number, their date. Uh, I've got a tab here for commission info. This is a great example of maybe some data that you might not want everyone to see, um, but that certain users might need to have access to. And I've dropped it into a section that I can collapse so that if I don't need to see that, I can hide it and call it up as I want. At the bottom of the screen here, I have all of my order line details. And if I had any miscellaneous charges on this particular order, they would appear here as, appear here as well. Uh, for demo purposes, I've got this additional information section. This is where I've dumped all of the fields we bring in just so that I can flash them up on screen, really honestly. Um, in live sites, this section wouldn't necessarily be here. Um, and certainly some of these fields that individual users might not have data for, might not be using, would be just completely pulled off screen, hidden. And if at some point they need to come back, you could always bring them back. But there are... Um, about 400 fields in this particular database table. Uh, we bring them all in. They're all available to you uh, if you want to be able to see them, either here or anywhere where there is sales order header information. And I can keep clicking forward and drilling down into further information. Um, so now I'm in the detail screen. I haven't really laid this one out. I've just got the straight list of data here. Uh, everything is linked backwards and forwards so that I can get uh, back to my sales order header quickly if I want, back to my account or to the customer's master record. Um, we've designed the system uh, with the logic that sometimes you come into Salesforce, know exactly where you're going, can get straight to it, no problem. In other cases, you may be there to research. Uh, you may have a salesperson on the ground who's about to visit a client and wants to check certain information. Are we providing them samples? If so, are they ordering products based on that sample? Should we maybe try to steer them in another direction based on what they are or aren't ordering? Do they have invoices on hold or have the, do they have any unpaid invoices? Are they themselves on hold? Um, you know, what is the state of their account? What do I need to know before I speak to them so I'm not surprised? This puts all of that information in users' hands um, and you can get to it either directly or by researching, drilling down. Um, additionally, all of the information we bring in, while it's still owned and controlled by Epicor, does come in as a part of the native Salesforce database. Uh, and what that means is, among other things, it's all searchable. If I want to search for a particular customer code, uh, I can see the account they're linked to, their master, all of their ship to addresses, uh, any information related to that customer code. The same holds true for sales order numbers, PO numbers, uh, serial numbers, stock codes or part numbers, any piece of data we bring in, uh, any piece of data native to Salesforce is available through search functions right there together. Um, we add on functionality such as the ability to write Salesforce quotes back into Epicor as a sales order uh, when the quote's accepted. Working through a mechanism like that as well and using that additional functionality, uh, all of those results would still be here as well. So regardless of what configuration of our tool you have, where you're originating your data, anything like that, uh, all of it's searchable, all of it's together in one place so you can find it quickly and easily. And by the same token, uh, that we bring in is available for report creation or dashboard building inside of Salesforce, uh, as well as for any third-party add-on applications that you might get as well through the Salesforce App Exchange. Uh, so for instance, we have a couple of customers who uh, use apps that are designed to plan routes for sales calls, for service calls. Um, and what these customers actually do is the address information that we bring in, they in turn feed into those apps. So they're using the Epicor information by way of commercial to plan their routes in Salesforce. Um, 
So that's a lot of information both to, to see on screen but also to, to sort of digest. Um, but that is the core platform. Um, the, the, the basic piece itself brings the information in and as I mentioned uh, we have other tools that will let you get information back into Epicor. Those can be added on down the road. Um, they each has different functionality. We built the system to be modular um, so that we can fit the specific needs of individual sites. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, we can talk about them one-on-one. -on -one. But the core product itself is a great way to get a lot of power, a lot of new information into the system quickly and provide oversight to your salespeople. It's an affordable tool. It's a quick setup. Um, and it's really a great way to empower your sales force uh, to, to interact as well as possible with their customers to get the most out of those relationships. Uh, and on that note, that really concludes the demo. Uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask them. Um, I don't have any waiting in line for me, um, but I'll hang on here a couple of minutes and see if anyone asks any. If you're trying to figure out what you want to ask or if there's anything you want to ask, no rush. Um, uh, just so that you know, everyone on the call, we are going to follow up with one-on-one -on -one to see what you thought, make sure that you got the information you wanted, uh, and see if there are any next steps that we need to take with you or that you're interested in. Um, uh, if you think of any questions after we end this today, you can ask them then. You can reply to the email uh, that you got the link you clicked to join the webinar from. Just reply to that email and that will come straight back to us. Uh, and beyond that, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, I hope it was helpful and meaningful to you. And I guess I'll wait on questions, but if anyone doesn't have them and wants to jump out, that's great. I hope to talk to you again soon.